Introduction Bande Shri Guru Gorango Radha Govinda Sundaro Saguno Giyote Chata Yita Gudarta Gauravam Bowing down to the holy feet of Shri Guru, Shri Gauranga, and Shri Shri Radha Govinda Sundara, all accompanied by their associates, I shall sing the great glory of the hidden treasure of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. The Srimad Bhagavad Gita is well known by the learned. Therefore, some explanation of the procedure adopted by this edition's editor must initially be given. The editor belongs to the school of thought descending in the Siblic line from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We will therefore distinguish that the present edition is based on the commentaries on Sri Gita as given by the preeminent exalted Sri Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas, Sri Vishwanath, Sri Baladeva and Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. By the manifest grace of our worshipful spiritual master, Om Vishnupada, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Prabhupada, and from hints given by the aforementioned great pure devotees, some new light has been shed herein, unfolding deeper meanings throughout the text. The devotional reader will appreciate this distinction particularly in noting the purport of the four verses, 10.8 to 11, which were explained by Sri Vishwanathapada to be the four essential verses, Chatushloki, of the book. Generally, Sri Gita is known as an excellent study of the science of religion. The language of Sri Gita is simple and sweet. Its mood is grave, extensive and fundamental. Its thought is brief, distinct and impartial. And its logic is sound and natural. The prologue, epilogue, exposition, review, analysis, synthesis and art of presentation of Sri Gita is unpresented and charming to the extreme. Sri Gita is activation for the lazy, courage for the coward, hope for the hopeless, and new life for the dying. Sri Gita unifies and sustains all ranks, whether revolutionist, occultist, optimist, renunciationist, liberationist, or full-fetched theist. From the atheist of grossly crude vision to the most elevated saint, the essential conceptions of all classes of philosophers are dealt with in clear and forceful logic. The fruitive worker, the learned, and the yoga practitioner, karmi, jnani, and yogi, and the devotee of the Lord, will find herein a comprehensive and illuminating exposition on the substance of their respective philosophies, and thus the book is highly esteemed by all. The essential teachings of the Vedas and Upanishads, of the Aryans, is directly explained, and upon a little closer scrutiny, the gist of various non-Aryan doctrines may also be detected in the text. Within the purport of Sri Gita, we find that the purification of consciousness through wisdom arises from materially unmotivated performance of scripturally enjoined duties, resulting in self-knowledge about existential knowledge or divine realization. In full maturity, this pure, spotless perception culminates 
in the quest for loving service, in pure cognition, in the divine ecstatic realm. In the analysis of Sambandagyan, or knowledge of divine relationship, Sri Gita has revealed that the nature of the most original truth is a transcendental all-conscious personality. In the analysis of Prayojana, or the supreme objective, internal inspiration of pure love in pursuit of the supreme absolute reality has been mentioned as the perfectional attainment. And in the analysis of Abhideya, or the method of attaining the desired goal, the first stage has been revealed as offering all one's actions to the Supreme Lord, followed by the cultivation of internal self-knowledge, which arises according to one's progressive realization of the Lord. Finally, by giving up all other endeavors, one surrenders exclusively unto the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. In other words, by taking shelter of pure unalloyed fate, one is situated in one's perfected divine identity and engages in divine loving service to the Lord, which is the ultimate goal of all devotional practices. Sri Gita has clearly distinguished and delineated the characteristics of the non-devotional paths based on action, karma and knowledge, jnana, and their corresponding achievable objects of sense enjoyment, karma and liberation, moksha. Therefore, the intelligent can note that by the statement yo yaj shradhaya sa eva saha, one is identified by his particular fate. Sri Gita has drawn an objective comparison of different paths and their goals, thus disarming and exposing those who create confusion by supporting the concoction that the many paths and goals are all one. In this respect, the following verses 6.46 to 47 deserve special attention. Tapas vi bio diko yogi jani bio pi mato dikaha karmi bias chati ko yogi tasma yogi bavar juna. Yoginam abisarvesam mat gatin antar atmana shradhavan bajati yomam sami yukta tamo mata tyaga or renunciation has been completely condemned and its futility has been emphatically asserted this proclamation shows the conclusive intrinsic gift of Sri Gita. Karma Yoga, or offering one's actions to the Supreme Lord without provisional interest, is preferred above Karma Yaga, or renunciation of action. And finally, full self-surrender to the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna with every action dedicated by divine inspiration in his loving service, is the ultimate and supreme teaching of Sri Gita. One will find it to be the king of all scriptures, as the bestower of the highest devotion. In its full-fledged nature, this devotion is the most supreme love divine, Love for the all-attractive Supreme Personality, Sri Krishna, Reality, the Beautiful. Sarva Dharman Parityaja Mam Ikam Sharanam Raja The grand, vibrant and resounding claration, call of 
Sri Gita has proclaimed the glories of life's super excellent objective. Hidden, more hidden, and the most hidden treasures have been given from the congregational chanting of the holy names of the Lord, Sankirtan, up to the spontaneous devotion, Bhav Seva, in the life of total dedication to the cultivation of Krishna consciousness with exclusive surrender. This is the consistent and unanimous conclusion of the pure parampara or descending spiritual succession as corroborated by the genuine followers of the lotus footsteps of Sri Chaitanya Chandra, the original Supreme Lord, who descends to deliver the fallen souls of Kali Yuga, this iron age of quarrel and strife. May this edition be an offering unto your Lord Sri Krishna. Swami Bhakti Rakshak Shridhar Sri Chaitanya Saraswati Mat Navadvip.